and welcome back to Financial Wellness Tips with me, Jocelyn Natasha. As you guys know, April is Financial Literacy Month, and every week this month, I've come to you with a video giving you my tips for securing your future and being financially responsible. If you guys don't already know, I am a certified personal educator in personal finance, and I mostly teach youth about securing their futures. Guys, I can't believe that we've come to the last week of April already. I feel like I have so much to share with you, and I just tried to cram it in all of these four weeks, but here we are, and I know that you guys will take all the information that I've given you thus far, and you're gonna make me proud. I just know it. This week, I'm gonna be coming to you talking about how to protect your personal information. So for the last four weeks, we talked about how to secure scholarships. We talked about how to maintain, manage, and create a budget. I've also talked about credit cards and what types of credit that you can do and or sign up for to start building your history and your rapport with lenders. So today I'm going to be talking to you about how to protect your personal information. If you don't already know, the two groups that are at most risk for having their personal information targeted are our youth and also our seniors. Youth, because you guys are a fresh set of information, okay? For somebody who could potentially be preying on you. You have no credit, you haven't got out into the world and started doing things yet, so this is like a clean slate. And this is somebody who's preying on another person's dream. And then seniors, because they are the most vulnerable, you know, they are highly intimidated when someone reaches out to them with creating a sense of urgency and saying you owe this amount of money or somebody in your family owes us and you need to pay their debts or whatever that looks like. They just want people to leave them alone. So they are more like whatever you need, I'll give it to you. And they're more willing to give out their information and give away their money <clears throat> because they are scared. So you guys are the two groups that are highly sought out when it comes to um, stealing someone's personal and or private information. So just remember that. And not to say that excludes anybody in between because this can happen to any of us. So <clears throat> remember when I told you guys to start familiarizing yourselves with what your credit report looks like? This kind of ties into that too, because then you'll be able to notice that there are any infractions or anything that you are not familiar with on your report that you can have reported and find out exactly what's going on and advocate for yourself. I know with technology being so advanced, we have AI um, and social media. That is a big topic that I want you guys to think about. So when you are using social media, I just want you to be mindful of the things that you're putting on social media. Don't overshare. Don't put too much information out there. I would go as far as to say not even using your real name. If you have a nickname or alias that you go by or maybe even just a middle name, um, not your last name, that type of information. You know, once prey, people who prey on you guys have a small piece of information, they can fish for the rest of the information that they may need. So let's say we're on Facebook and it's my 21st birthday and you're my friend and you want to tell me happy birthday. So you come on my page and you say, hi, Jocelyn, happy 21st birthday, you know, best wishes, wishing you many more. So if somebody is monitoring my information, they know my name, they know how old I am. So they know my exact date of birth because it's my birthday. Um, if they go on my page, then maybe they'll see my hometown, right? So they'll see where I'm from. Maybe they'll start looking at some of my mutual friends or other people who are commenting. And now they're just piecing together information. And I know it sounds like who would go through all that trouble? Somebody is willing to go through all that trouble, okay? So I want you guys to remember that as well. Also, monitor your mail. If you're receiving 
mail saying that you owe X amount of dollars from certain organizations or companies and you know nothing about this company, it is your job to do your homework and find out what this company is talking about. Once you receive a letter like that or if you receive um, information saying that, you know, you're in collections or you owe something and you know nothing about this particular account, it's up to you to contact whomever the person is and you are gathering information at that point. You're not giving any more information because it sounds like this company already has enough information about you and you know nothing about them. So when you contact them, you say, hey, I'm calling in reference to a letter I received. I need to know who you are, where this is from. This does not sound familiar to me and I need to get this squared away and move forward from there. Also, be on high alert for um, clickbait, right? So I know a website might look like it's a company, but it might not be that company, right? So pay attention to the fine details. Also, when monitoring your email, if you receive an email that says, oh, click here, you need to be leery of all those click here's because once you click it and your information goes, there's nothing that you can do about it. Okay. Also remember, um, big organizations like um, the IRS, like government agencies, they will never email you. They will never call you. They operate on a snail mail process. Everything that they do, their communication to you will be through the mail. Now you do have the ability to call them and then you also have the ability to use their website and, you know, make an account and sign up for different things like payment arrangements should you need to. However, when they are reaching out to you, it is through mail only. So always remember that any emails or texts, anything like that are super, super red flags. And the last thing that I want to point out to you is how you're using your phone and your apps. So I know we all love a good deal and a discount, but just be leery when you're signing up for loyalty cards and memberships online that you're giving away your information and that can go anywhere. Also, I know we like to do this because I do it myself, but sharing of your location. Sometimes you're not just sharing your location and or information with your best friend, mom, dad, um, somebody that you trust to know your whereabouts. Sometimes that information can be leaked out uh, as well. And then certain apps that we use. So um, for my ladies who use the apps to assist with keeping up with their uh, personal things, sometimes, well not sometimes, a lot of the time, that information is not secure either. That information um, can be used far, far, far beyond um, our reach. So I just want you guys to be careful and just be thoughtful of the information that you're putting online your information more specifically um, and be careful with when somebody is inviting you to their website or inviting you um, to be a part of a program that they have that can save you money or time or something um, that you are still leery about using those okay so i wish you guys the best thank you for being with me in this entire series. I love talking to you and I know that you guys are going to use all these tips and make me proud. Until next year, bye!